Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today for an informative and exciting Carnival Cruise Line webinar. My name is Johanna de Guzman. I am the Manager of Industry Relations, North American Travel Trade Membership here at CLIA. And I'm just going to quickly go through some housekeeping before introducing our presenter. The webinar will run for about 40 to 45 minutes with time for questions at the end. Please feel free to type your questions into the questions module of the webinar, and we will get to them at the conclusion of the presentation. This webinar is being recorded and will be posted on CLIA's YouTube channel, CLIA Global. And with that, it is my pleasure to introduce our presenter, a 40-year veteran of Carnival Cruise, Carnival's Senior Vice President of Global Sales and Trade Marketing, Adolfo Perez, to learn about Carnival's newest and most innovative business series, Your Winning Plan. So I'm up. <laughs> Can you guys hear me? Yep, we can hear you loud and clear, Adolfo. All right, hi everyone. Uh, thank you so much for joining the webinar, Johanna. Thanks for the uh, introduction. Really appreciate getting the opportunity to be here today <clears throat> with these uh, great CLIA agents. Um, and today we are gonna talk about a couple of things, one being your winning plan, and that's the Carnival Business Success Series that we've designed specifically to help travel advisors uh, grow their business, treat their business like a business, and set themselves up for success. And uh, from what I can understand, it's probably the first ever business success series in the cruise industry. And uh, we were very proud and excited to do this. Um, last year, <clears throat> we were meeting, uh, my team and I, my sales leadership team and I were meeting uh, in Atlanta for uh, a meeting, uh, for SL, what we call our SLT meeting. And we were talking about uh, what we could be doing in 2023 to really help travel advisors. And, um, you know, we had thought about bringing back the uh, Agent Palooza bus tour. Uh, we were thinking of creating a grand finale, and that doesn't mean we'll never do that. Um, but we decided, you know, this year in particular, since it's been such a, a crazy past few years that we've really kind of, uh, you know, passed that threshold now where we're really, you know, all doing really well. We've all completely restarted all of our fleets. Um, we're in a position now where the demand has been incredible. And it's a really great opportunity for us, as well as all of you and even the other suppliers uh, to, uh, to really be successful. 2023 for Carnival Cruise Line has been incredibly successful. I would say that after August of last year, <clears throat> when the uh, COVID restrictions were uh, eliminated from cruising, uh, we really saw a huge spur of demand that we thought would only last for a little while. But fortunately for all of us, including you guys, that demand has not wavered. Uh, we've had our strongest booking days ever um, this year. And um, like I said, I just thought that this year in particular was a great time to really focus on the business side um, versus our Agent Palooza, which is really a celebration of your efforts. Not that we don't wanna celebrate your efforts, but we thought what a pivotal year 2023 is and going now into 2024, I can't believe it's almost August already. Um, really finding how we can be of more value to you and help you um, grow your business. So one of the things, uh, well, what we obviously launched was your winning plan and uh, it's an eight part series. Um, and one of the biggest focuses from this, uh, from this program has been on creating a business plan for your business. Whether you're a host, you're, you're, you belong to a host, whether you work for somebody else, whether you have a retail office or you have a franchise, you really need to treat yourselves like businesses. Whether you're small or large or medium, it doesn't really matter. I always try to you know, use this example. Imagine if at Carnival, you know, every year they just say, okay, go out and spend as much money as you want. Um, spend as much money as you want on marketing. Uh, don't worry about the number of bookings you're expecting to get. Um, imagine what, you know, how that would uh, work in a company like Carnival. And yes, we are a multi-billion dollar company, part of a huge travel corporation. Uh, but nonetheless, every business uh, really needs to focus on putting together a business plan. So what we did was um, <clears throat> we partnered with several different uh, organizations, including CLIA and ASTA, and then also the U.S. Small Business Administration and their uh, partner, um, their partner uh, uh, organization, uh, the SBDC, to really figure out how we could make it easy for our travel advisors uh, to put together a business plan. So 
of course, Carnival is always about fun and about winning things. Uh, so not only are we doing this, um, this program for you that I think will add a lot of value to your business, but we've also made it um, a, a way to make some money too. So you're competing for $20,000 worth of prizes. We have two more events. Actually, one of them is today in Denver. And then the next one is in Richmond on, I had it up here on my phone. Don't tell me. I will tell you the one in Richmond is on July, sorry, uh, August, no, July the 5th. Sorry, hold on. Of course I have it here. And Sorry, Richmond will be July 28th. So Denver today, Richmond, July 28th. And then if you don't happen to live in one of the cities that we were uh, physically uh, doing these presentations and these seminars, uh, we actually have a virtual event that's going to be held on August the 5th. Um, and at that one, uh, it will be reduced in time because the, uh, the ones in person are eight hours. We thought we, as, as exciting as this information it is and as helpful as this information is to you and your business, um, we didn't think we could keep you online for eight hours. So we, sh we shortened it to, to, uh, to four hours and it's from 10 to two on August the 5th. You can register for, um, for that one at, um, at goccl.com. And if you want to be put on a wait list for the Richmond location, July 28th, because it is sold out right now, but we are managing a wait list, uh, you can send uh, an email to trade support at carnival.com. So from each of these physical events, as well as the virtual event, we are selecting one semifinalist, the agent from those uh, seminars or those sessions that put together the most compelling business plan um, will be judged by CLIA, Carnival, uh, and ASTA, and we will select the semifinalists from each of those events, and that person is going to win $2,500 to be used towards their uh, business plan. Although ultimately you can do whatever you want with the money, we're hoping that you're gonna invest it in your business and, and growing your business. Um, and then the final event uh, will be in, uh, in Houston on September 27th, and that will be an in-person uh, uh, in person event. Uh, about 600 agents will be in person at this event, and we will also be live streaming it from the event. So you'll get an opportunity to attend whether you're in Houston or close to Houston or not. Um, we'll be able to make sure that you get to uh, see that. And part of the most, one of the most exciting things is, is that at the grand finale, uh, not only is our president, Christine Duffy, who used to be a travel agent, she's also gonna be speaking, but Damon John from uh, ABC's Shark Tank who is a renowned uh, entrepreneur who has done an amazing uh, has done amazing work to be where he is today, and uh, he will be uh, giving us uh, a presentation on entrepreneurship, on his journey to becoming a successful business person, and you won't want to miss that, whether it's in person or online. Um, and we will be flying each of the uh, semifinalists, all expenses paid, to the Houston event. And at that Houston event, uh, Damon John will actually be uh, presenting the grand finale winner who will win another $5,000. So you have $7,500 at stake here. Make sure you take advantage of this, whether it's in person, uh, whether you're you know, at the Denver one today or Richmond, July 28th, or the virtual event on August the 5th. Be sure to do it, take it seriously. This is really important. You, know, you really need goalposts that you need to find out whether or not during a year, whether you're hitting your targets or not. Um, the, the, the great thing about putting together a business plan is that you can set it up to look at it monthly, you can look at it weekly, you can look at it daily if you want, or quarterly or twice a year, and to see how your results are versus what you had signed up for yourself to be your business plan. And if you're doing better, then maybe you can go and have a great dinner and celebrate. If you're doing not as good as you wanted to be doing, you know, what are the things that you need to do? Do I need to do more marketing? Do I need to make more phone calls? Do I have to hire more associates? What is it that I need to do in order for me to get to my, uh, to my uh, goal for this year or next year? Um, and, and also business planning is not just about one year. You should be looking further out as well. And, uh, you know, kind of set yourself uh, a plan to grow your business the way you want it over the time uh, that you look at. So we are definitely invested in your success. We want to be the best sales and service uh, organization, a supplier for all of you. 
Uh, I was at the San Jose event. It was great, very enthusiastic uh, people there wanting to learn. Um, and uh, we're really, you know, we've actually even changed the program a little bit since that first one, where we're even focusing more on the business plan and cutting out some of the other training that you can easily do with us online for GoCCL and those types of things. So make sure if you haven't been to it, that you sign up for the one that's still available for or on a wait list for Richmond, or make sure you attend the virtual event, which is like I said, August the 5th from 10 to two. Some of the stuff that we've been training has been sales and marketing skills. And as much as we want you to sell more Carnival, um, it really is about selling uh, everything that you sell, right? Uh, what do you, how do you, how do you make sales? How do you find group business? How do you get referrals? How do you use social media to uh, attract new consumers that uh, can do business with you? So that's, that's also a very important part of the presentation. And as I said, the deep dive into the, um, the business planning part of it. We actually got a great um, uh, template that we worked on together with the Small Business Administration. It's online, it's easy for you to use. Uh, it asks you know, a bunch of questions, what you wanna do, how much money you wanna make, how much commission, and it really walks you through the steps. And we make sure that we go through that in detail uh, during those presentations. I already told you about this, that we are about the, the prizes that we're giving away. So the $2,500 for each of the semifinalists and then the additional 5,000 at the grand finale. All right, so here is a way for you, for you to register for the virtual event. Um, it is, uh, again, it will be on the 5th of August from 10 to two. Uh, it's well worth your time. Um, you can easily register online. We have up to 6,000 spots on the virtual event. So uh, make sure that you get your spot because those things, believe it or not, go filling up pretty quickly, um, but we still have uh, some time. And then uh, in addition to the prizes that we're giving out to the semifinalists and ultimately the, the grand finale winner, uh, we're also going to be giving everybody 500 um, loyalty rocks, uh, sorry, uh, 100 loyalty rocks points. So the first 20 business plans that are submitted actually get 500 Loyalty Rocks points. So make sure you take advantage of this. This is a great opportunity for you to learn more about business, learn about how treating yourself like a real business, uh, not just kind of going by the seat of your pants, but literally sitting down and making plans. So the, this, I'm so excited about this uh, final event, uh, grand finale event with Damon John. Um, he will be having a, uh, a fireside chat with Christina, as well as uh, giving a keynote presentation. Uh, we will be offering, I love the way they call this, heavy hors d'oeuvres, uh, beer and wine. So if that's not reason enough to go, then I don't know what it is. So on August the 14th, the registration for that event will open up. Make sure you get your spot. And uh, like I said, if you're unable to get to Houston for this event, then you can always, <clears throat> you can always join us uh, for the live stream that, for that one as well. All right, so after working a long time for Megan Broussard, who's my Senior Director of Trade Marketing and Communication, uh, working uh, with their team, we finally got Damon John on board, we got all the contracts signed, and he's got a great little message for all of you. What's up, Travel Advisors? This is your boy, the Shark here, Damon John, and I am so excited to join you in Houston on September 20th. Hey, Adolfo, this is Johanna here. Let's try and restart that video just because Damon's, Damon's oh, sound wasn't coming through. I didn't through. want to be hear an echo. I don't know if you can hear an echo. What's up, Travis? Can you hear an echo now? Yep. Damon John, and I am so excited to join you in Houston on September 27th for the grand finale of your winning plan, Carnival Cruises Business Success Series. Now, here's what we're going to be talking about what I've learned in business and my entrepreneurial journey, of course, tips and keys to success. And 
More importantly, how can you build a relationship with partners like Carnival to grow your business? So it is going to be an absolutely amazing night and you can join in person or live stream. Sign up open on August 15th. So be sure to register on gocclcom exclamation mark. Peace. You were able to hear it okay? Yep, loud and clear. All right, good. Yeah, I muted it because I thought they would hear an echo if it was playing on my speakers as well. So that's why I did that. So anyway, now I know for the next one. <laughs> All right, so enough about uh, your winning plan. I think that we we definitely covered a lot of information about that. I hope you guys are excited about it. We were as excited as we were as putting this plan together for all of you uh, and really look forward to uh, you guys attending if you haven't already and uh, also uh, winning that prize money uh, and getting an opportunity to hear from one of the most uh, successful entrepreneurs in the business or in any business, actually. All right. So now I'm going to jump into fun Italian style, right? So how many of you have heard, not that I can see any of you, you've heard about the Carnival of Venezia. Um, well, we were so excited to welcome her to New York uh, in uh, last uh, couple months ago. And she uh, debuted from her new home port in New York City uh, with brave reviews. She had done a transatlantic cruise uh, with thousands of really happy guests. Um, to really, you know, really wanting to try what, what is this new carnival, uh, fun Italian style. <clears throat> and uh, you, let me show you some of the stuff. So first of all, Carnival Venezia, as I said, sailing from New York. And then her sister ship, Carnival Firenze, will be sailing from Long Beach uh, starting May 2nd next year. And these ships were essentially brand new ships. They're very similar to the Vista class. It's the same superstructure, um, but with some uh, design differences on board. Um, as well as some new things that we've added to make sure that we really lean into the Italian heritage of Costa uh, and bringing it to the U.S. because uh, who doesn't love good Italian food and good Italian drinks? So the Venezia, um, like I said, oh, sorry, uh, Venezia just launched uh, out of New York a couple months ago or about a month ago. And we, uh, we had uh, our first cruise was to Bermuda, um, four day cruise to Bermuda. She offers a variety of cruises. So let me go ahead and share a little video of you so you get a sneak peek of the Carnival of Venezia if you haven't seen some of them on my Facebook page.
The ship is absolutely beautiful. I didn't know really what to expect. I got the opportunity to see her um, in Spain just before she uh, started her uh, her transatlantic cruise, uh, stopping in a few spots in, in Europe and then finally making her way across the Atlantic to New York. And I didn't really know, like I said, what to expect. And, you know, I was a little worried. Is it going to be too thematic? You know, are these ships, you know, is it going to be too kind of hokey in the sense that it's all been... It is not. It is absolutely beautiful. The ship is elegant, beautifully appointed. The uh, the the nods to Italy, like the uh, the gondola in the dining room, is spectacular. Um, when you walk into the atrium, you're basically walking into St. Mark's Square in Venice, um, <clears throat> and uh, the the spaces on board are just amazing. The ship is basically, like I said, brand new, and we spent almost seventy million dollars on a brand new ship. Uh, to make sure that the the things that your clients expect on a carnival cruise would be available on board this ship. So we have bonsai sushi and teppanyaki. We have the steakhouse. <clears throat> we have Guy's Burgers with a little Italian twist as well. Um, we don't have Blue Igu Iguana Cantina, but we have Pomodoro, which has a, a combination of Italian and Mexican food. Uh, so, you, I mean, you really get to taste a lot of, uh, of the Italian uh, uh, fare. Uh, that your clients will absolutely love and also have some of the traditional stuff that we you know, typically have on all of our ships. Um, I got the opportunity to go into a brand new space that's called Il Viaggio. It's a specialty restaurant, Italian restaurant. I think you saw the chef preparing some octopus in there. And I got the opportunity there a couple of times. And I'm telling you, it is amazing. Not only is the space beautiful, not only is the decor amazing, elegant, uh, something that just anybody would like. Um, that all used to be retail space, believe it or not, because when we built, when Costa built these ships, they were intended for the uh, for the Asian market for China, and uh, because of the shutdown, uh, they decided that they weren't going to take their ships back there, at least you know not at that point. And because Carnival has had such incredible demand since the restart. Uh, it only made sense, you know, when you work for a, a corporation that has movable assets. So if you work at a hotel company, you can't pick up a hotel and drop it off somewhere else. But when you have the uh, the demand for, for uh, you know, in order to be able to fill these ships uh, in the U.S., we were able to take on those two ships, the Carnival Venezia and the Fidenza, which will be joining in May uh, out of uh, uh, Long Beach to the Mexican Riviera and Baja, Mexico. And um, I'm telling you, your clients are going to love these ships. They're really beautiful, well, well appointed, uh, very elegant, uh, and just spectacular. And the food offerings are amazing. Um, and then the, the we'll, we're also going to be doing some Italian themed uh, sail away party. We have a Venetian mask party with the captain's uh, cocktail or the captain's uh, toast event. There's like a big Italian street festival that goes on. It, it really will transport your clients into, um, into these Italian uh, iconic places like Venice and then the Firenze, which is Florence. Um, and you're just, you're just gonna love those ships and I'm sure your clients will too. She will be doing a bunch of different itineraries uh, out of New York City, uh, different lengths, uh, including some journey sailings. And then next year, she's coming to Port Canaveral for the winter season, uh, and she'll be doing seven-day sailings to the eastern, western, and some special journeys, special journey cruises to the southern Caribbean. <clears throat> and then, like I said, I can't wait to see the Fidenze, which uh, will be coming out next year, and I'm sure we'll be doing a bunch of work on her to transform her into not only the beautiful costal ship that she is, but to add all of the carnival uh, things that your clients expect and love. Um, so we, you know, we, we we're excited about that. We've gotten great uh, response. The, the summer was pretty much sold out for Venezia pretty soon on, um, and we're expecting similar um, success for the Firenze out of, out of California. And if you want to know a little bit more about it, feel free to go to goccl.com um, to get more details about fun Italian style. All right, so I've gotten to the end of this presentation. I know we have a Q&A time. Um, and Joanna, if you're gonna, you're gonna give me some of those questions that you got from the audience, we'll answer them as best as we can. I have phone a friend available in case I don't know the answer to the question. <laughs> um, <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, we can get started here. Uh, the first question or the first few questions will be 
uh, surrounding the Carnival Business Success Series. So what motivated Carnival or you all to start this program? Yeah, so I mean, <clears throat> I talked about that a little bit in the beginning and that really was, um, you know, when we got together as a sales leadership team last fall, um, you know, we, we really wanted to, you know, because the 2023 was such a pivotal year, everybody's back in service, uh, all of our ships are operating. We're getting these, you know, all these ships we, we've launched. We're going to be launching five ships between then and um, uh, and May of next year. So we started off with the cell of Carnival Cell. Well, actually, the Luminosa, another Costa ship that we took over. That one is a traditional Carnival ship um, that we've got based half the year in Brisbane, half the year in um, in Alaska. She's finishing up her Alaska season and we'll head back to Australia at the end of the season. Um, and then we had the uh, celebration, which we launched uh, out of Miami, started uh, last fall or last winter. Then we uh, just launched the, the Venezia. In December, we're launching the Carnival Jubilee, another XL class ship, sister to the Mardi Gras and the Carnival Celebration. And she will be home ported in Galveston, Texas. Uh, if you haven't been on one of these ships, you've got to take the opportunity if we have ship tours or if you get an opportunity to take your vacation on them. These are truly game changer ships for us. Not only are they our biggest, but just jam packed with a bunch of amazing uh, space. So with all this capacity growth and uh, really taking advantage of the uh, uh, of the of the demand, I you know, it, my motivation was how do we provide more value to travel advisors? Um, as much as I love the Agent Palooza tour, bus tour, um, we thought, what can we do that will bring value to them and their business and help them grow their business? And, you know, although obviously we talk about Carnival at these events, um, the, the real gist of this is about planning your business, putting together a business plan so that you can measure your success and adjust as necessary throughout a year so that you can hit your targets and hit your commission earnings uh, potential uh, and ultimately grow your business. So that, that was really the motivation behind it, what we could do to bring more value as a supplier to our travel advisor partners. Great, thank you. What can travel advisors expect to learn or experience when taking part of this first ever program? Well, we, you know, Again, the the uh, the most important thing that I hope hopefully we are you know hyper focused on at these events is the the business plan um, and putting that together. Like I said, we work with the Small Business Administration. We you know we got a template uh, that is used. It's an online template that's very easy to use um, that you fill out <clears throat> uh, really to set up your your first business plan. In some cases, sometimes it's just a better version of your business plan. Um, and by working with these uh, with these uh, organizations, uh, it really does you know give it a little bit more uh, gravitas, I think, uh, by by having worked with them. And they also get an opportunity to speak at these events. And you would be surprised as to how many um, uh, services and uh, and things that you can use in your community with these regional uh, SBA representatives. They've talked about all the different things that you can use them for in your local community. And I, I think most of us don't even think about some of those things. So it really, the focus is on that. Obviously, we're going to be training on sales, um, you know, how to get the business, talk about groups a little bit, um, you know, and all the opportunities that agents have to uh, to get the group business and really, you know, help propel their business uh, to success and to future growth. Thank you. Um, so we know that the Carnival team has worked on uh, partnering with businesses or business experts and organizations for this program. Could you share more on how travel advisors uh, can leverage those opportunities for their own business growth? Yeah, I mean, look, by, by attending these, and like I said, if you didn't have an opportunity to attend a physical event, then do the virtual event, because um, really the, the, the thing that I think you'll get the most out of from these events is putting together the business plan. And I think that the other huge value you, you have uh, from attending for attending these uh, events, whether it's in person or virtual, is the... Uh, to really understand what this Small Business Administration can do for you. Um, they have all sorts of resources available. They have mentoring programs. They can uh, provide you with other uh, collateral that will help you uh, 
uh, really manage your business. Um, and again, the, the biggest thing here is that even if you're a single agent who is hosted by somebody, or whether you have a big retail store or you are an associate, it always helps for you to plan out your time. And I think that that's the leveraging that you should do is getting that information uh, from the, the business planning template, as well as the resources that you have available to you from the Small, small Business Administration. Great. Uh, last question regarding the Your Winning Plan series. Um, mm -hmm. There are a few people who are asking, they may have joined late. Could you just go over uh, what which travel or how travel advisors can take part in the Your Winning Plan series and who is eligible? So everybody's eligible. You do have to have a GoCCL um, uh, login in order to, to register for one of the programs. Um, like I said, the one we're having one in Denver today, and then we have the one in Richmond coming up. Uh, they are sold out. So if you want to attend the one in Richmond in person, send an email to trade support at carnival.com. Um, and we will, we're working a wait list. And I'll, I'll go back to the slide that had the, the QR code. If you can't make it in person, then you really should be registering uh, for this virtual event. It's four hours long only. It's August the 5th from 10 to 2. It's on Zoom. We have up to 6,000 people that we can uh, uh, put on that program. And that will, although that, that event is shorter than the in-person ones, you're still going to get the great information. We're going to do a deep dive into the business planning part of it, as well as giving the Small Business Administration an opportunity to, to share how they can help you in your communities. So I'll leave this up for a little bit. So Thank you if for people that. are registered, it makes it easier. Yeah, I know that a lot of people were asking, how do they register? Uh, one question that they did have just to follow up with this uh, virtual event is, is there a fee attached to attending the virtual event? No. No fee for any of the events. This is our, the, we, we sponsored and are hosting these at no charge to you. Great. Uh, so to move away just a bit from this um, wonderful event that you all have sponsored and, and organized, could you speak a little bit about what does Carnival Fun Italian style really mean? Yeah, so, the, the, you know, Costa Cruise Lines is basically like the Carnival version of Italy. So they're Italy's cruise lines, we're America's cruise line. And uh, their, uh, their offices are in Genoa, Italy. Uh, they have had a long, uh, a long run in Italy as the cruise line of Italy. Um, it's not a national carrier, like a government owned thing. It's obviously owned by Carnival Corp, but it's as close to a, a national airline or a national cruise line that you can find because they are truly Italian. Um, and, uh, the the carnival fun italian style so by taking on these these uh two ships the venezia and firenze um we a there's a lot of italian americans in the united states a lot of americans love italian uh themed foods uh and events a lot of americans go to italy it's a huge destination and uh, now basically what we're doing is yes it is a carnival cruise it's our crew members our team members on board uh, our entertainment staff on board, um, but we, like I said, we do lean into the Italian heritage of Costa, um, and, uh, and and that means that some of the things that you'll see, some of the bars will be Italian drink themed. So uh, Amari and Frizzante, um, at these bars and Pomodoro, these bars specialize in it Italian themed drinks. Although you can get pretty much any drink on you know that you want. It's not only strictly uh, Italian themed drinks. But um, so that's what we're doing, the, the Venetian mask uh, uh, party, um, the, uh, the, the Venetian or the Italian street fair. Um, and of course, the food offerings on board will also uh, lean into the Italian heritage of Costa. Great, that sounds wonderful. Could you share, Adolfo, I think people would really like to know, what are some highlights from the Carnival Fun Italian style product that you are most excited and looking forward to sharing with the guests? Um, <clears throat> so I, I would say, cause I didn't get to go on a full cruise. I did a one night from Tarragona, Spain to Barcelona. So I didn't get to get the full experience. Um, but I, I, I know the things that I would be looking forward to. Well, number one, I did have dinner at the Il Viaggio, which was amazing, an amazing Italian uh, uh, dinner. Um, that 
that space is, like I said, beautifully, I think you saw that in the video, you could see the beautiful design, the elegance. Uh, and then on top of that, the food offerings are incredible. Um, and then I didn't get to do the, the sail away party, the Italian street fair. Um, that would be a lot of fun as well as the Venetian, um, the Venetian mask party. Uh, you can either bring your own or we have a way for you to make your own on board. Um, and uh, really just getting to, you know, have a carnival experience with some Italian flair, um, not only in the design of the ship, but the foods, the drinks, the some of the entertainment um, that are really going to be a, a big hit with, with their clients as well as them, I hope. Awesome. It sounds super, super exciting. Um, last question we have here is, what is the reason why Carnival took over the ship from Costa? All right. So Carnival got three ships from Costa. One was Costa's uh, Luminosa, which I talked about what she's doing. She's in Brisbane half the year in Australia, uh, doing South Pacific, Great Barrier Reef, uh, some short cruises as well. Uh, she's very similar to our Spirit class. We did paint the funnel on that one. We didn't paint the funnel on the other two because um, that one is 100% carnival. There's no specific, you know, fun Italian style on those on that ship. Um, and then, as I said earlier, the um, the uh, the two ships were originally designed and were going to be launched in China. Um, and when that didn't happen, um, they had two ships that they were using. But they also Acosta also received two XL class ships, um, and their capacity was growing tremendously. And we were having su such success in the U.S. with the amount of demand that we had for the Carnival cruises. That it only made sense when you're looking, like I said earlier, the, uh, the, the great thing about you know, being in the cruise business is that you have movable assets and you can move those assets to places where they're going to do the best. So China's off the table for now. Uh, Carnival's doing great. And that's the reason that uh, from the corporate side, Corp, uh, Carnival Corp, uh, it was decided to bring those ships over to the Carnival Cruise Line fleet. Thank you for that information. Uh, we do yeah. have about, we do have some time here. If you wanted to share any contact information, Adolfo, where the attendees can contact you if they have any further questions or would like more information about your winning plan or anything else, um, could you provide us with any uh, email addresses or, or phone numbers that they could um, take away? Yeah, well, the, the email is really simple, trade support at carnival.com. You're welcome to send any questions there. Um, uh, my Facebook page, uh, which is facebook.com slash carnival trade. Um, <clears throat> they, we get a lot of questions on there that I answer and I do get a little help from my team because it is a lot. Um, we have, uh, over 60,000 followers. So, uh, we do get a lot of interact, uh, engagement and interaction and question asking, and we can uh, do it that way. Also, you know, if you have a BDM, you should have a BDM. Um, and if you don't know who your BDM is, uh, you can also send an email to trade support at carnival.com and we can tell you who your BDM is and they can help you with not only Carnival Fun Italian style or the your winning plan, but just about anything that you can think of uh, when it comes to cruise sales, uh, how to, you know, how to be better at virtual, uh, sorry, uh, getting some groups in your, in your community. Um, and also, uh, you know, they, we, we offer an online training program called Learn and Earn that you also access through GoCCL. We have a bunch of different modules. We're, we're actually in the process of revamping that. Um, and uh, we hope to have new, new modules in there. Um, I recently did a From Adolfo's Desk Live with uh, Ann Cedric, who's the uh, VP on my team that runs <clears throat> charters, meetings, and incentives. And she did a great presentation. We're actually going to add some charter. Um, modules to learn and earn because there is such a huge opportunity we just had a small franchise agency uh from one of the big franchisees uh get a charter of the green berets believe it or not um on one of our ships the paradise and uh you know she worked with her bdm she worked with the company that was or the, the people at the in the uh in the military that were trying to put this group together and believe it or not she got a whole entire ship sold just by her so um, I think that, that there's a great opportunity with corporate incentive groups, um, as well as even charters. You may be a little intimidated, but you should watch that from a Dawson's Dust Live. And I think you'll be motivated and find that you do have the opportunity in your community to, to get some uh, charter opportunities. 
Great, thank you. Just to go back a little bit to the Your Winning Plan series, we do have a couple um, attendees here that are asking if you could review just how, if they do want to get um, involved in the uh, Your Winning Plan series, how do they submit their, their business plan? Well, they have to attend the, uh, the event. So whether it's the last one in Richmond or the virtual event, they have to attend one of those. That's where we'll go over the process uh, of how to fill out the, uh, uh, the template that we've worked on with the Small Business Administration. Um, and uh, that's how you get to submit uh, your, uh, your winning plan. Uh, and then it will be judged by us as well as CLIA and ASTA. Uh, for the semifinals winners, and then finally for the uh, the uh, the grand finale, which will be uh, announced in in Houston on the 27th of September. All righty, and let's see if we just have any more further questions. And I do want to let attendees know that there are a bunch of questions coming in. So if we can't get to all of them today, or if they're just not relevant to the entire group. Um, our presenters and, and the Carnival team will get a copy of today's um, questions that you all are sending in and, and they will be able to reach out to you. Um, Adolfo has provided the contact information. Um, Adolfo, if you want to just say it one more time, just so people can write it down, uh, we can get that yeah. out to them so they can contact their BDMs or, or you all directly. Yeah, trade support at carnival.com. All right, and that just one more time is trade support at carnival.com just for all of our attendees who may have questions that don't get answered today. Mm -hmm. All righty. And let's see here, just waiting to see if there's any further questions. Adolfo, while we're waiting to see if, if our attendees send in any additional questions, could you speak about um, any I, I know that uh, this is a question that comes up a lot in our webinars. Could you just speak about the accessibility or ADA accommodations that come up, that are on board for the, the three Costa ships that you all um, brought into the Carnival fleet? So we, we have a, a commitment uh, with the U.S. government to have all of our ships uh, fully uh, ADA compliant. Um, we have I forgot how many days of dry dock over this. We've already done a bunch of the ships um, um, and we are in the process of uh, rolling this out to the entire fleet. We have, a, I think, a, the end of next year or the year after where all the ships have to be fully uh, accessible, whether it's uh, the number of staterooms, ramps to places. Um, I, I think that uh, <clears throat> travel advisors would definitely uh, find that our our teams on board will bend over backwards uh, if they're not completely fitted out yet uh, to make sure that they can get around to do the things that they want to do uh, on board the ship. And, and we also partnered with Culture City because it's not just physical disabilities. There are also um, invisible disabilities. And we've partnered with Culture City and those that really is a focus on the invisible um, uh, disabilities like autism, uh, some people who just, you know, we have these kids on board where we have, uh, you know, sometimes those those kids and even adults have um, problems with loud noises. We have uh, sound counseling, uh, canceling headsets. We have kits that we hand out to the guests on board that need them. Um, we have worked very closely with them, and I'm really proud of our partnership with them. And uh, and I can assure you that from both a physical disability as well as <clears throat> invisible disabilities. Carnival will be, uh, you know, leading the pack with that. Great. Could you speak to, just in regards to those three ships again, could you speak to anything that is new or exciting that the kids can look forward to when they do come on board with you all? The Italian one? The Italian stuff? Mm-hmm. I mean, we're, we're offering our regular uh, kids program. Um, I can assure you that they lean into the Italian part of it, um, probably creating Venetian masks as a, you know, as one of the, the uh, um, activities. Uh, also um, having the ability to try amazing gelato and uh, all sorts of things uh, that they'll be able to uh, enjoy on board the, the Italian themed ships, uh, any, you know, things like that that would focus specifically on that Italian heritage of Costa. Um, they should probably, uh, they, they will expect, they can expect that on board. Okay, great. And I know that um, you spoke a lot about this um, 
in the beginning. Are you able to go back to the slide? Um, let's see what they're asking here. The slide right, is this the slide right prior to the question and answer slide that you had there? This one? Uh, yes, there was a, uh, they were asking about um, any events in the New York City area aside from um, the ones that they. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have a full ship visit uh, program uh, this year. Um, you can either speak with your BDM uh, or go to gocl.com uh, because we do have almost 200 ship visit opportunities uh, this year. Um, and uh, I think at the Clio was the first ship visit that we did for the cel Carnival Celebration in Miami uh, at Cruise 360. Um, and we will be doing that as well at um, Cruise World Travel Weekly. Um, and then, like I said, we have close to 200 um, uh, ship inspection opportunities. Uh, usually the BDMs are the best ones to go to for that, um, but we do have information available online. All righty. And let's see, we do have a couple more. They do want to say, um, the, the attendees do want to say thank you for the emphasis on accessibility um, and, and the autism awareness on Carnival Cruises. Um, they were asking if there's any autism awareness um, on Carnival Cruises and if you could give any examples on that. Yeah, no, like I said, we have, we've trained our team, especially the, uh, the, the youth counselors on board. Uh, with Culture City. So like I said, we partnered with them. Uh, we provide uh, the kits uh, for uh, any kid who needs them, even an adult, um, <clears throat> whether it's, you know, the lanyard with their with their thing that says VIP on it. We don't say, oh, I have a disability or anything. Uh, but that way our crew members can identify somebody if somebody's having a moment where it may be too much stimulation or something and they start, you know, having um, uh, a reaction to that, uh, our team will be able to quickly identify uh, this person as someone who has uh, an invisible disability and, you know, has been trained, fully trained on how to, um, how to help them, how to maybe get them back to their parents or if they're adults, who they're, who, who they're traveling with. Um, so that, that's one thing that we do. We, we provide a lanyard that, that calls them a VIP guest and our, our teams on board are trained to, to know how to handle those situations uh, through the extensive training through Culture City. Um, and, uh, you know, one of the, the things that's the best thing is the, this whole little kit that we have where they can have stuff that they want to fidget with something. We have things that they can use. Um, like I said, the, the, the canceling, the noise canceling headphones, if they're, uh, if the stimulation of too much sound or loud noises uh, scares the person, uh, they have the ability to wear those. Um, and uh, I mean, like I said, the staff has been fully trained by Culture City. Uh, it's an ongoing thing. It's not just a one and done thing because we have new team members, we have things that change um, and we work very closely with them to make sure that everyone on board uh, is uh, aware of how to uh, take care of these guests, uh, these special guests um, on board the ships. Great. And just to wrap up here, um, Adolfo, could you just let us know or share one of your favorite experiences? I know that we said that uh, you were a 40-year veteran with Carnival Cruise Lines. Out of your 40 years, could you just share one of your favorite experiences, whether it be an excursion or food or just time on the ship? Oh, gosh, that's a hard one. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually 41 and a half, a little bit more than 41 and a half years now. Um, I, th I think one of the most exciting things um, has been the ability to, you know, attend these uh, inaugural events. Um, and when, you know, when a ship is first introduced into the into the uh, into the fleet, uh, I'll never forget. I remember uh, the Mardi Gras uh, was coming was about a year late from the shipyard because of COVID, and she uh, went over to Port Canaveral before the ship started sailing. And I can't tell you the emotion that seeing a brand new ship for the first time honking its horns and with the water cannons going off with the, you know, with the tugs around it. Um, at that particular point, we also had some of our um, sister ships uh, escort her into the port. It was, it was really a magical moment. So I would say that getting an opportunity to, uh, 
to introduce a brand new ship into the fleet has been amazing. And over the many years that I've been here, starting with the Tropical uh, back in 1982, I've really had the opportunity to be at every single one. The only ship I have not been on yet is the Panorama <clears throat> because I was in Australia because we were relaunching the Splendor, but in Australia at the same time and it kind of, it, it, it conflicted. So I, that's the only ship I have not seen uh, in our fleet or sailed on. <clears throat> But I hear she's beautiful. She's a Vista class, uh, so Vista Horizon and Panorama. Um, and like the like I said, these Italian, uh, the two Italian ships, Firenze and Venezia, are also relatively very similar to the Vista class. So they'll know how to get around on those ships pretty easily. There are definitely some differences, um, but that and I, you know, getting to meet certain people uh, along the years, certain godmothers we've had. You know, we had Kathy Ireland, uh, Katie Couric. Uh, well, Jay Leno was our first godfather, got to meet him. <clears throat> um, and I mean, this this job has given me uh, the opportunity to do things, go to places. Uh, another thing that was really cool was uh, taking the carnival celebration from the shipyard in Turku, Finland, uh, with our international GSAs on board. It was just us and workers. Uh, I boarded the ship in Turku and uh, took the ship to Southampton, where she was doing her inaugural transatlantic cruise. And getting to see a ship that I thought there was no way would be ready in four days because they handed it over uh, with some spaces still not done. I'll, I'll never forget there was like a staircase that like a glass staircase that goes down from uh, I think it's deck four, five to four or something. And I was like, how are they going to do this in four days? And that wasn't the only thing. There was furniture wrapped up in places and. Um, and getting to see the, the, the shipyard workers who were on board transform her from an almost finished ship to a fully finished ship in four days, that was pretty amazing too. Great. Thank you so much for that. Um, I, I mean, I haven't been on a carnival cruise, but um, just hearing how your experiences and speaking about the different ships and what's new to come, I'm, I'm hopefully I get on, on board soon. Um, well, we Adolfo, I, <laughs> I know that you all wanted to give away um, to 10 lucky winners. So mm -hmm. I think I sent over the randomly selected winners to your chat there, if you wanna open yeah. that up so you can announce I have, them. I will announce them. So the first winner is Yolanda Lampkin. Next one, Vanessa Martinez. Next one is Tyra Young. Next one is Tona Robinson. Then Tammy Squires. Stephanie Strouch, Ron Dick, Paulette Fernandez, Natalie Hines, and Michael Lambertus, or Lambert, sorry, Lambert. Um, <clears throat> so if, if I called out your name, just send us an email to trade support at carnival.com claiming your prize. Um, we're giving away some loyalty rocks points, and uh, we are excited that you guys got the opportunity to win, and we look forward to. Uh, to seeing you all on board a Carnival ship and sending your clients to Carnival cruise ships. Thank you so much, Adolfo, for a great webinar. Um, we will send out the, uh, you all will get these emails, uh, the Carnival Cruise, we will provide them to you all so you guys can reach out and connect. Okay. Again, the contact information that Adolfo and the Carnival team um, shared was trade support at carnival.com. Um, so we hope to see you all next time on our CLIA Cru Global Cruise Line webinars. And thank you again, Adolfo. Well, no, thank you. And thanks to all the travel advisors for spending some time with me and for their interest and support of Carnival Cruise Line. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Great. Have a good day, everybody. You too.